This is The Weeknd Iceberg. The Weeknd is an artist who has been in the spotlight for over a decade. Commonly referenced to as the greatest musical talent since Michael Jackson, The Weeknd makes waves with each release. Hi, I'm the Internet Anarchist, and today I'll be guiding you through the ultimate Weeknd Iceberg. An iceberg chart is a way of sorting information from most known to most unknown. Thank you so much for 500 subscribers, and without further ado, let's get into the first layer. The first layer of this iceberg is titled Average Weekend Listener. Blinding Lights refers to the second single from his fourth studio album After Hours. Blinding Lights topped the Billboard Hot 100 for four entire weeks. It's also known as the longest charting song on the Hot 100 of all time, spending 90 weeks on the chart. Is the weekend's most successful single to date and was the most streamed song of 2020 with nearly 1.6 billion streams. And to add, it's the second most streamed song of all time on the platform, with the only song topping it being Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. Starboy refers to an incredibly popular song by The Weeknd and Daft Punk. Not only is this one of the weekend's most popular songs, it's the most popular song Daft Punk has ever been featured on. But the most interesting part about the song comes in the music video. In the music video, The Weeknd is shown trying to destroy evidence of his previous self, including his awards from his past album Beauty Behind the Madness. The entire video was a metaphor for The Weeknd destroying his past self and reinventing himself new. And if you compare Weeknd before Starboy and after Starboy, he seems like a completely different person. Relationship with Selena Gomez refers to the fact that Weeknd and Selena Gomez dated for 10 months in 2017. XOTWOD means EXO till we overdose, and EXO being the word that Weeknd uses for his crew as well as his fans. But The Weeknd also uses EXO to say ecstasy and oxycodone, X standing for ecstasy and O being for oxy. Save Your Tears refers to the most popular song on The Weeknd's fourth studio album, After Hours. Save Your Tears was the best performing global song of 2021. The song is definitely one of his more 80 synth heavy tracks, but focuses on The Weeknd addressing his past relationships and recollecting on his experiences they've gone through together. Like a lot of The Weeknd's tracks, it's one of those songs which you just can't get out of your head. Super Bowl performance refers to when The Weeknd in 2021 performed at the halftime show in the Super Bowl. According to articles, The Weeknd was given $17 million to do his performance. To put that into perspective, Michael Jackson was only given $1 million, which is definitely still a lot, but still, 17 mil? Wow. The final entry in the first layer is that Abel is the weekend's real name, which is pretty self-explanatory. Now, we move on to the next level, which is the surface. Not things the average weekend listener will know, but if you looked into it at all, or listened to a bit more of his older music, then you'll know some of these things. I also want to state that this is the part of the video where things get a little bit darker. OvoXO refers to a collaboration between Drake and The Weeknd. OVO refers to Drake's record label and brand, October's very own, and as explained earlier, XO refers to The Weeknd. The Weeknd opened up for Drake on his 2014 tour, but their relationship became strained when Drake wanted to sign The Weeknd and The Weeknd declined. Meaning of EXO and XOTWOD was something that I spoiled earlier, but if you don't remember, all it means is ecstasy and oxy until we overdose. NSFW and music videos and album covers refers to the fact that The Weeknd has quite a bit of boob action in his music videos. Now, I didn't do heaps of digging because I'm a good boy, but some examples of this is Pretty which was released in 2013, 28 which was released in 2012, and Earned It which was released in 2015. As for the covers, the only one I could find was Often which appears to be The Weeknd sitting in between two naked girls. There's probably a heap more examples, and honestly not surprising that these themes are in his music videos, especially considering the words he's talking about. I feel like the only people who'd actually be shocked by this are people who don't listen to what he's actually saying in his songs, but then again, that probably makes up for like 90% of his listeners. Since YouTube won't let me say this entry without the video being restricted, let's just say substance usage. The Weeknd over time has opened up quite a bit about his substance usage. Not only does he mention it in his song lyrics, but also in interviews. In 2021, he told The Guardian that he took everything from Ket to Coke to MD to mushrooms to Zannies and all the way to cough syrup. The Weeknd doesn't claim to quit using these substances, but he says he's going to try to quit the hard ones. You know, the ones you can take and die 10 minutes later. Can't feel my face is about coke. This entry refers to the fact that that I can't feel my face when I'm with you song isn't actually talking about the female who is in love with. You know, it's talking about uh, the nose candy is in love with. The gack, the blur, the rock, whatever you want to call it. That's what he was in love with at the time. Relationship with Bella Hadid refers to the fact that in 2015, The Weeknd dated American model Bella Hadid. The year of their breakup 2016 was also the same year that she won model of the year. As for the reason for their breakup, the reason was that their schedules were too hard to coordinate, and The Weeknd really wanted to focus on finishing his album and take his career to the next level. And with that, we have successfully completed the second layer of this iceberg. Now we go down to the next layer, which is below the surface. And if you're already a Weeknd fan, this
this is where you find the stuff you don't know yet. The actual House of Balloons is at 65 Spencer Avenue refers to the fact that House of Balloons, the house that it all started in for the weekend, is located at 65 Spencer Avenue. This is the house that the weekend named his first album after, and where he first started being introduced into the themes of his music, partying, substances, and uh, S-E-X. Nowadays it's said that there's just some random people renting out this place and they have no idea of its past, but you'd think they know now based on the amount of people who go there just to take photos in front of it. Half of House of Balloons almost went on to Drake's Take Care refers to the fact that Drake was planning on taking 14 songs from the weekend's House of Balloons. Although Drake didn't end up taking the 14 songs, he ended up having 6, meaning that Drake's album Take Care likely wouldn't have been what it was today if it wasn't for him using a lot of the weekend's already made songs. The Noisy P refers to a fan-made collection of leaked songs that were made before the House of Balloons album. Since the tracks were never officially released, a lot of them are demos or unfinished work. One of the songs in the collection was Do It, which The Weeknd released in 2009 on his old YouTube channel which is called Able Official, which to the date of recording this video only has 925 subscribers, making this extremely obscure. Valerie refers to a song The Weeknd made on November the 13th, 2012. In the song, The Weeknd talks about Valerie, a girl who he truly loves, yet is still cheating on. The song ends with Valerie knowing that he's cheating on her, but are not wanting to leave because she doesn't want to be alone. FML refers to the song from Kanye's record Life of Pablo, where The Weeknd and Kanye discuss their struggles with fame, self-control, and staying faithful to their lovers. If you haven't heard this song already, you should definitely listen to it. The Weeknd's vocals will give you goosebumps. Also, I know there's another entry regarding this, but that's coming in later in the iceberg. Abel Loves Horror Films refers to the fact that, well, he loves horror movies. In fact, his Kissland album was very inspired by horror movies, which becomes very evident when you listen to some of the production in the songs. Abel Doesn't Like Interviews refers to the fact that he doesn't like interviews. Now, I did some looking into this, and Seems that Abel admitted this had problems with his confidence being pretty low, especially when being in front of cameras, which is pretty rare for someone of his notoriety, but also why he's often referenced as Pop's biggest introvert. Abel's Haunted Mansion refers to the fact that in 2015, The Weeknd told Details magazine that his house in Hollywood Hills is haunted, mentioning that he's had sleep paralysis and heard voices multiple times, which actually adds up considering that his house is built over Indian burial grounds. Memento Mori refers to a radio station created by The Weeknd, which would play songs that The Weeknd selected that inspired him during his album making process. The show began airing on June the 8th, 2018, and still airs today. The final entry of this layer is that Abel sold his soul to the devil. This is a theory referring to the fact that The Weeknd sold his soul for fame and wealth, all at the price of his love and relationships. It's said that in Beauty Behind the Madness he sells his soul, in Starboy he kills the devil, and in After Hours he becomes the devil. It's a very interesting theory with more depth than you'd think, considering that his music videos have a lot of symbolism which can support the case. And with that entry, we have successfully completed the third layer of the iceberg. Now we move on to the next layer, which is deep underwater. And if you thought the last layer was obscure, well, you're in for a ride. Why the E is missing is referring to why Weekend is spelt without the E. And this was revealed due to an AMA back in 2013, where he stated that the spelling was without an E for copyright issues, due to a Canadian band already being named The Weekend. The devil appearing in music videos entry refers to the fact that a personification of the devil appears in The Weeknd's music videos. A big example of this is in Can't Feel My Face when he got set in fire by the devil when he was performing. A few months after that music video was released, another video came out called Tell Your Friends, which featured The Weeknd burying himself until the devil walks up, but instead of letting the devil watch him bury himself, he turns around and shoots the devil in the head. I guess you could say with his music videos, the devil is in the details. Trust Issues refers to a song where The Weeknd flipped the script with Drake and remixed one of Drake's songs. He took Drake's trust issues and made it 10 times better. A lot of people claim that The Weeknd actually made this song, but from all my research, it seems like Drake actually made it. 67 versions of The Hills refers to the fact that The Weeknd recorded 67 different versions of his hit song The Hills. Drunken Love Remix refers to a Beyonce song which The Weeknd remixed to release on his birthday. The song features some crazy bars by The Weeknd and goes in deep about substances. If you haven't had the pleasure of hearing this song before, definitely give it a listen after this video. I Drew The Weeknd refers to when in 2021, The Weeknd made his instant Instagram profile picture a fan up from one of his fans. Let's just say the art was uh, <laughs> pretty interesting. The Darkness of Echoes of Silence refers to the third mixtape by The Weeknd. The mixtape takes an alternative R&B approach, mixed with some elements of post-punk and trip-hop, and the mood of the mixtape is dark, druggy, and claustrophobic. Kelly is slash was the mission is referring to in 2015 The Weeknd saying that Kelly is the mission, and then 2020 saying that Kelly was the mission but now is leaving. Now what he means is he thought that California was a place to elevate his music career and take it to the next level, but now that he's there, now that he's done that, he wants to leave. The final entry of this layer is Abel crying while performing at Coachella, and this is referring to when in 2018, The Weeknd had a breakdown whilst performing Call Out My Name for the first time at Coachella. It's rumoured to be about his ex-girlfriend Selena Gomez, but whatever it was, it definitely cut deep. And with that, we've successfully completed the fourth 
fourth layer of the weekend iceberg. Now we move over to the second last layer, the ocean floor. XOXXXOOXO refers to the original name of the weekend's YouTube channel. This was changed in 2018 by YouTube when they tried to make artist channels easier to find. Harajuku Nini 305 refers to a channel which the weekend one of his friend owned, then 2011 used to post unreleased videos of him. The channel was deleted over a year ago, but before then featured a lot of pre-2011 weekend. Kin Kane refers to a name which the weekend used to rap under. Work at American Apparel refers to the fact that the weekend used to work at the American Apparel in Toronto. FML was for Travis Scott refers to the fact that the weekend's verse on Kanye West's FML was originally meant to be for Travis Scott. However, the weekend took his place in the released version. Scrapped upbeat album before My Dear Melancholy refers to the fact that in 2018 the weekend scrapped an entire album of upbeat music and instead released My Dear Melancholy. Scrapped King of the Fall album refers to the fact that The Weeknd had plans on making an album called The King of the Fall. But instead of an album, in 2014 we got a song called King of the Fall. I've done heaps of digging and there's not much information known about this album or what it sounded like, but it definitely would have been similar to the 2014 era Weeknd. The Birds as an interlude refers to the fact that the two Birds songs have an interlude which The Weeknd first premiered in one of his concerts in Chicago 2012, but never officially released. Where Alone Together slash Nothing Without You OG refers to a scrapped EP that was meant to be released in 2018, and a rough demo produced by Diplo that was leaked in 2019. Abel punched a cop refers to the fact that he well punched the cop. The situation happened around 4.20am on the 10th of January 2015, where the weekend found himself involved in a fight that police intervened. One of the police officers pulled him into an elevator where he was punched by the weekend. Kissland's song samples three different songs refers to the fact that the song Kissland in album Kissland samples three songs, two of which being Silky Johnson's Nothing's Gonna Change and Desert Rose, and the third being Lover Tornelli by Sebastian Taylor. From Stereo to Spatial refers to when in 2021, Apple Music released The Weeknd's Save Your Tears in Dolby Atmos Spatial Audio, making it a very immersive experience. One Man One Jar reaction refers to the fact that there's video on the internet of The Weeknd reacting to the infamous shock video One Man One Jar, where a man puts a jar where a jar shouldn't go. And with that, we've completed the second last layer, meaning that now we move on to the final layer, which is called Hell. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit like because it does help with the algorithm, and the more people who know about The Weeknd, the better. Bullies and Nerds refers to a group the weekend was in, whilst is under the rap name Kin Kane. The second half of the group was his childhood friend Jesse Ray. The Bullies and Nerds collection is available on SoundCloud under the user Weekend HQ mixtapes, and it was posted on the 22nd of May 2013. Kissland sequel refers to the fact that there was a rumor going around that the weekend was working on a sequel to his album Kissland. Now, I couldn't find much about this actually being legit, but I did find some people saying that After Hours was the Kissland sequel, but I can't say for sure. Remember how I mentioned the girl Valerie earlier? The girl the weekend was cheating on, but she didn't want to leave because she would be lonely? Well, Lots of people have interpreted that at the start of Birds 2 at the gunshot, that's actually Valerie shooting herself. Open letter to fans refers to when in 2012, The Weeknd got signed to Universal Public Records, essentially entering the mainstream music market. Soon after, he released an open letter to his fans apologizing for going mainstream, yet promising not to change despite his newfound fame. YouTube channel typo refers to the fact that in 2021, whoever was managing his YouTube account put a typo in the playlist name, spelling his name as The Weeknd with an E instead of The Weeknd without an E. The unreleased song Insomnia has a lost sequel refers to the fact that the unreleased released song called Insomnia has, well, a lost sequel. Now, obviously it's lost, so we can't find what it actually sounds like, but Insomnia is easy enough to find. This entry is called The Singles, and I have no idea what this means, so comment below if you have an idea, and I'll include it in the pinned comment. The final entry of this entire iceberg is King of the Fall demo, and this is referring to a 10 second snippet we have of a song called King of the Fall. Now, this isn't to be confused with the song which he actually did release called King of the Fall, this one's completely different. And with that, we've completed the weekend iceberg. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoy Iceberg and Deep Dive videos, make sure you subscribe because I release them weekly. See ya!